Well, hey guys, it has been a while since um, I've chatted with you. I've put up a couple videos since I first did my last updates, um, but they were things that I had pre-filmed like a long time ago, and I just didn't want my channel to be completely dead, although it sort of felt that way. Um, but before I started putting up videos again, I wanted to give you an update about life and all the things that I chatted with you about in the past few videos in regards to my health and about um, personal situations and all that jazz. So I wanted to let you know what's going on. Okay, so I don't quite remember where I left off with you. Um, I know I was in my truck and I had just been to the clinic. I don't think I'd yet had my surgery. Um, I ended up having my gallbladder removed and it went well. Um, some people, a lot of people told me recovery would be so easy and you would be back to your old self in no time. One person even told me she was up doing her normal thing within two days. That wasn't my experience. Um, I It would, took me a long time to recover um, before I was starting to really feel like myself and could actually meander through life like at a normal pace. Um, my mother-in-law ended up staying with me for almost a week um, and taking care of the kids and I think that was so good. Like I could sleep as long as I needed to um, and just rest and I was dealing with a lot of emotional trauma with some things in my personal life and I really honestly feel like God just took me out of the game for a while. I feel like he knew that all of this was going to happen at the same time and I honestly feel like having my gallbladder removed was sort of a gift because it meant that I was just kind of out of the game. Um, my in-laws took care of basically life for me. Um, they are the most incredible selfless people ever and I just hope to be like them um, in my life. I was going to say someday, but why wait till someday? <laughs> um, and so my mother-in-law stayed with us um, and she just took care of everything. Um, my father-in-law came to take care of my dogs um, when my mother-in-law like ended up you know, going back um, home and stuff like that. She had taken a week off of work, a leave um, to be with me, but her dad was also not doing well either. Um, so she was in the midst of taking care of him and me, and it was it was a crazy time of life. Um, and so um, I just, I you know, through lots of rest, um, just started to recover. Um, my father-in-law, like I said, he would come. We have four hunting dogs. Um, and he would come and he would like let them in and out and he would feed them at night because we just because of the way that my husband trains them it's better to feed them at night um and so he fed them for me because I couldn't even like bend over to let them in and out of their kennels um from my incisions I couldn't even bend over to kiss my son goodnight like in his little toddler bed so um yeah just so self selfless there was one point where I didn't think he was coming over and I uh, went outside. We'd had an ice storm and I went to let the dogs out and I went outside and I slipped and fell on the back stairs and jarred something really badly. And I was only like maybe I was less than two weeks out from uh, my surgery and something like jarred and it was to the point where I was hurting to breathe and I had all the signs of a cracked rib. So I went to the clinic and they, you know, really kind of made sure that it wasn't a cracked rib. They determined that what happened was is that my muscles, like I really need to go to massage therapy. I am so tight. I'm so out of whack that I basically just jarred myself like big time um, and my muscles were like so tensed up they like gave me a prescription for muscle relaxers and something else they only took the muscle relaxers a couple of times and they really did help um, but uh, after that I was kind of taking it easy and back to myself very very quickly so that was great uh, what else um, I went so about a month later in March, I had um, a follow-up appointment with the gallbladder surgeon just to make sure that I would was good to go, kind of released from his care sort of thing. Um, he told me that actually my gallbladder, 
I had a stone, he said, this big in it, and he said my gallbladder was actually pinched, inflamed, and stuck to my stomach. So it was a good thing it came out. Um, we, he had also discussed with me about my adenoma, um, and so I don't know if I told in the last video, but so what happened was I have a lipid rich adrenal adenoma. So basically it is a tumor on my adrenal gland and most often they are benign but we needed to make sure that it was benign. So eventually I was able to go and do all of this hormone testing um, to make sure that it wasn't like making, um, giving me more cortisol levels than what I should normally have. And so that, I think when I last talked to you, I was talking about how I needed to do this testing and stuff. And because I was on medication from my gallbladder surgery um, and I had to be detoxed free of like coffee and vanilla and avocados and tomato, not tomatoes, was it tomatoes? I think tomatoes, like all of these, a whole bunch of stuff. Like I couldn't eat a whole bunch of stuff for three days and then I had to test for 24 hours collecting my urine. Um, I wasn't able to do the testing for a while. So um, when I finally got it submitted, I was waiting for like two weeks to get the results for this. And I'm like, why am I not hearing about this? Um, and the gallbladder surgeon had talked to me about my adenoma because um, he deals with that kind of thing as well. And he actually said he would refer me to a specialist. Um, so anyways, I didn't hear anything about my testing. I finally went into the clinic. Turns out it's all good. Like I'm perfectly normal, perfectly normal. There was nothing that was like elevated in any way, shape or form. So I get it's so all, all that to say, A, it's not cancerous. B, it's not active. Um, and from this point, I'm still waiting to hear from the specialist. I don't know if he's going to call. I don't, I don't really know. But at this point, because it's not active, I'm not super worried about it. Um, it will be something that I will always kind of know that I have and kind of monitor myself. Like if I'm not feeling great or something, I don't know. We'll just, I, I, I know that I have it. So that's good. Praise the Lord. I'm like good to go. So that's amazing. Um, and lastly, the things in my personal life that were just um, kind of all unfolded at the same exact time as this, such trauma and heartache and hardship and all the bad things that you can possibly imagine. God is a good God and his hand has been upon my life and the life of my family and those around me and People don't change, they say, but the power of God changes everything. And I have watched his hand move and people change. And I have changed. I've become um, a better version of myself. Um, and those situations are healing. Like, I can't even... To stand here at this point right now and to think of where I was almost three months ago, I just, I don't recognize that life. It was such a different life. Um, and this is the life that I've dreamed of. And I believe that um, things had to get to where they did so that change could happen. And God is good. Um, I know that I've never talked specifics. Um, one day, I believe it will be something that I talk about because I believe that this is a part of my story and um, I want to let people know like how good our God is and how healing he is. Um, and I wanna share some of the things that helped me get through. But for now, those stories are private to me um, and uh, I just want you to know that your prayers carried me that season of life I can't even describe it um, it was I couldn't even watch YouTube like I couldn't deal with anybody else let alone watch anybody else 
live any kind of life or share tips and tricks and anything. It took me almost a month and a half to even click on my subscription feed um, once I did start watching YouTube videos again. Um, I would just watch what was recommended and a few channels that like were so big that my little voice would have been lost in the hundreds of comments that they get um, and things that were so far removed from my own life that I didn't even have to think like, oh, how can I be better in this? Because I had no margin to deal with any of that at all. Um, I spent a lot of time watching like the Waltons and different um, sitcoms because it meant I didn't have to think about my life. Um, I did a lot of journaling and reading and praying and weeping and um, praying some more really. And your prayers have honestly carried me through. So many of you reached out to me and I just, I didn't even have the margin to write to you back because I was so undone by my life um, and was dealing with just such shock and, and and horror <laughs> that my life had fallen apart. Um, but God is good and he's redeeming. My husband ended up coming home a couple weeks ago um, from the job that he was on. He was away, like six hours away, and we only saw him, I think he came home once, um, and then he did end up coming home for good. He had the opportunity to work at home. He could have stayed down working there, but um, it was just better and time for him to come home. Um, and the one amazing thing is that I got to experience the best bucket list moment ever of my life. I crossed the number one bucket list thing off ever, ever. If you follow me on, on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. I got to go see my favorite artist since I was a kid, Rod Stewart. My husband got us really great seats. We weren't in the very front section, but we were just right behind that very front section. Um, such an amazing, I was dead center. And the funny thing is about a Rod Stewart show is that there's a lot of old, elderly, I guess I should say elderly, not old people, elderly people there, like white hair and all, um, because Rod's like, in his 70s so um, it was great because a lot of people just sat down I didn't and the people behind me didn't um, so I had like a great view of him because everyone was sitting and I could just see and actually even at one point in the show he he said he made everybody sit down so that he could sit down too and sing a few songs and like you know relax because he's older but it was the best. We stayed in a really swanky hotel that was like right next to the um, convention center. We didn't even have to go out of our hotel to get into the convention center. So we could just walk over with like coats or no coats. And um, we had an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And it was truly like bucket list, bucket list. And I'd love to go again, but if I don't, at least I... And die happy knowing that I saw Rod Stewart and it was number one thing. Anyway, so I just wanted to give you guys that update. Um, I do have content coming. Um, I've been filming some things. Some things might, um, you know, I don't, bleh. I, things are coming. I've thought about you guys so much. I thought about my channel and um, just what I want to share here. Um, and I just, again, thank you for for being here and for the community that you have created here and I love you guys and just thank you.